Uh, my name is Tom Mooney. I am founder and CEO of Westward, American Single Malt Whiskey. Uh, and I thought as we approach this topic of the visitor experience and sense of place, well, first I should show you a picture of the place uh, since the American Northwest is one of a kind. Uh, but also, you know, I, I suspect that if we all have closed our eyes and think of distillery visits or uh, visitor experiences, uh, or if we think of some of the examples that have come up already in, in this conversation, we will be talking about brands that have been around for a while, uh, who then significantly elevated that visitor experience and that sense of place. So I thought it'd be interesting to bring you a different story, uh, which is the story of a distillery built from square one, uh, who you know, distilled the first drop of something before anybody knew what it was, uh, because it's really not, not the story of how to give a sense of place to a brand we know, uh, but how to use the place to make the brand known. Uh, and so it's a bit of a reverse paradigm there. Uh, and, uh, and so along the way, I, I also like approaching it this way because I get to tell you things that we actually did uh, and which ones were smart and which ones really didn't work out the way we thought. Uh, or perhaps more importantly, how as our brand has grown up, what that visitor experience needs to deliver and its importance for the brand continues to evolve. Uh, so I plan to be very candid about what we've learned along the way, as those of you who know me would expect. Um, all right, so, so first of all, and before we get into the details, uh, in, you know, in 30 seconds or less, um, the, the tasting room for Westward Whiskey has already, even in you know, the last decade, changed dramatically in terms of its reason for being. Uh, when, when the distillery begins from scratch, uh, the, the first role the tasting room plays is called the only place you can generate revenue. Uh, and it literally pays, generates the money this week to make payroll next week so that we can make more to put in the tasting room. Uh, and the story of most of the 2,000 plus craft distilleries that Margie mentioned is exactly that. It is the first place where hard work can turn into revenue and allow companies to stay in business. Uh, and we were no different. I mean, we, we began distilling whiskey 15 years ago. Uh, we first brought Westward into our tasting room seven years ago, uh, and it remained only in our tasting room for most of the last seven years. Uh, us bringing our whiskey finally into wholesale distribution came much later. Uh, and so for that, those first few years, um, you know, whether it was Westward or other products we made, the tasting room kept us in business. Uh, and because it did, you know, as we thought about you know, how to manage it and what to manage it for, you know, we wanted to bring as many people in to visit because we felt something we were doing was interesting. We, of course, wanted to tell the story of the brand, uh, and it was pretty awesome when they left with a bottle or two because then we could make payroll next week and keep doing what we're doing. Uh, so after we were doing that for a while, uh, we, so we came upon the first revelation to us, which was you know, we might be taking this a little too literally in thinking that the whole point of having our tasting room and of creating that visitor experience is to bring people to a distillery. It's super cool to go to a distillery, but from a broader, longer-term standpoint, you know, there are more important things to do than try to convince as many friends as possible and as many of their friends as possible to come see what a distillery looks like. We realized that we needed to bring the brand to them. Like at some point, you know, we, we're not the Walt Disney Company, we're not selling tickets to Disneyland, right? We're creating a world-class spirit that we need for people to know and try before they'll ever walk into a store and buy a bottle and love it. Uh, and so the, the whole reason for being of how we host visitors changed with that understanding. Uh, and one of the first things that changed as a result was you know, we moved away from the, not away from the distillery, but in addition to being you know, a great distillery visitor experience, we started to look for other places in which we could bring the distillery, bring everything that was great about Westward and what we do, uh, and 
put it in front of people where they are. Uh, and this is, I mean, an incredibly obvious insight, but one that eluded us for a while, and I think not everybody may have caught on to. Uh, people are busy, and you want to make it easy for them to find you. Uh, and so one of the pivotal moments you know, for us as, as a distillery and, and for Westward as a brand uh, was an opportunity that came up to build a distillery tasting room uh, at Portland International Airport. Uh, and so we became the world's first distillery tasting room at an airport. Um, yes, we were aided enormously by the regulatory framework of Oregon that allowed us to have more than one tasting room, including the one at the airport. But that doesn't matter. Like We could have just as easily not seized that opportunity, just as everybody else who could have seized it did not. Uh, and having that tasting room at the airport completely changed the not just the level of exposure consumers have to Westward, but our own idea of what that visitor experience is like. Because all of a sudden, while we continue to design you know, a great experience for somebody who comes to the distillery and spends two or three hours. We needed a really great experience for somebody who's going to catch a flight in 45 minutes and wants to learn about the brand. And, you know, from a numbers standpoint, you know, this year we will have received a little over 100,000 visitors when the year is over. More than 90,000 of those are at the airport. So, so when you think of, you know, what, what our visitor experience is, we may think it's a distillery visit because that's where we live and work, but for 90% of the people who visit Westward, it's the time they spent with us at Portland International Airport, either on their way to a flight or on their way home you know, from a flight. Uh, and so that obviously caused us to rethink you know, what we're saying and how we're saying it and, and of course how much time we have to say it. Uh, and then with that, you know, we, we tried to find new ways to take it further. We started looking for farmers markets where we could again bring, let's say, a mobile version of our story in our tasting room. Uh, and once again, find people who we know would be interested in what we do and how we do it, but to go to them, you know, not, not to keep making them come to us. Um, so I'd say that was certainly one of the insights. Now, another thing we realized along the way uh, as as that experience changed and as, as the way we connect with people changes, in more ways than one realizes, uh, we're driven by the metrics that we choose to, to measure our business. And um, as an example, you know, when, when the tasting room for Westward was the thing that kept us in business, clearly the most important metric was profit. Because if there was no profit, there was no payroll, and if there was no payroll, there's nobody making anything. And that's obvious, but you know it, it is where we began. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, over the years, we started thinking in terms of visitor numbers and transaction numbers, and what's the average ring, and how can we get each transaction to be more valuable? Uh, and then one day, and, and this is very recent, I would say within the last year, we realized like those are all awesome metrics if we were a retailer. Uh, and as we started to explore like our own behavior, we realized like internally, we call our tasting room at the distillery, the DRO, which is the distillery retail outlet. And the words we use are retail and the metrics we were using are retail. And again, that'd be awesome if we were a whiskey store and we want to grow up and be a whiskey store. Uh, but it turns out that we're, you know, the brand owner of a really great American single malt whiskey, and that we were not serving the needs of the brand or planting the seeds for the future of the brand by running you know, as profitable a retail business as we were. Uh, that just was not, we were, doing, we were doing the wrong things in the right way. Now, you know, we made some money and covered payroll and made more whiskey, but but in the long run, that wasn't going to serve our needs. Uh, and so we realized that you know, the, the business we're in in the long run, and if, which matches uh, one of the charts Margie showed at the beginning, you know, as we get bigger, as we you know, are here in Berlin promoting Westward in Europe uh, or in Australia you know, a month ago, uh, all of a sudden the brand is much bigger than just one place. While you know, the soul of the brand is in Oregon and at the distillery, the, the people who enjoy the brand are everywhere. 
so to, to think of that experience as not a transaction, in fact, to never again use that word, uh, but to think of it as the start of a relationship or an opportunity to deepen a relationship. Because the fact is, you know, we make the world's most recognizable form of whiskey, single malt. But very few people in the U.S. until recently have done that. And so a big part of you know, what we want people to take away is, okay, what is single malt and how does it compare to something else? What is westward and how does it fit within single malt and within American whiskey? But most importantly, having covered all that, like how can we stay in touch? Like you're a friend who just came to my home. I have a lot more to tell you. And there's a lot more cool stuff that's coming down the road. And unless you and I built a relationship the day you made that first visit, you're going to miss out on it and we're going to miss out on the opportunity to share it with you. Uh, and so we are, I mean, in the process today of completely revamping what we call everything, how we measure everything, uh, but really with the goal of becoming the place where relationships with Westward begin as opposed to the place where transactions for Westward happen. Uh, and then finally, you know, on, on the topic of, you know, what, what keeps people engaged and what will cause somebody to be interested in coming back, uh, I mean, this is the most challenging part of everything I just said. I mean, saying it's easy, creating a reason for people to stay engaged and want to come back is hard. Uh, and so you see in the presentation, you know, a couple of pictures from things that I know have worked well. Uh, one is, you know, something I admire deeply is uh, Stranahan's uh, Snowflake releases. So Stranahan's is uh, also one of the pioneers of American single malt whiskey, and they have an annual release called Snowflake that people lose their minds over and fly in to Denver and stand in line and wait for. Uh, and so it creates a recurring reason for somebody to come back and learn more about the brand and be exposed to a new interesting product. Uh, we you know, internally and you know, more recently, uh, started the Westward Whiskey Club. Uh, and so this was kind of another kind of change in insight. You know, we spent about 10 years feeling really sorry for ourselves because wineries can have wine clubs and do most of their business through the wine clubs. And for reasons I won't belabor, you know, the law doesn't allow us to do what wineries can do. And then one day we realized, like, well, we can feel sad or we can at least take what the law does give us, start there, and then change the law over time. Uh, and so we, we launched something that is analogous to you know, your favorite wineries club um, that initially is pickup only because we're not allowed to ship to addresses outside of Oregon. Uh, within a few weeks, we're going to start shipping to addresses within Oregon. And then over time, we'll change that. Uh, and so this, we feel, will become you know, a really important part of how we stay in touch with people uh, and you know, how that first visit becomes the start of a relationship. Uh, so I will leave it at that so that we can share other stories. I know Guillermo will tell you wonderful stories about Mexico. I've had the privilege of visiting him there, so it's as awesome as he's going to tell you. But for now, I'll say thank you.